Before VE Day, this building was a Nazi arsenal. In it were housed some of the most powerful weapons the Germans ever hurled against our troops. This building was an arsenal of words. Divide and conquer. 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 A powerful weapon, gentlemen. And I'm pleased to tell you that we are using it well. In America, for example, we have a very fertile field. A mongrel nation. There we are able to play on many strengths. Protestant against Catholic, Gentile against Jew, capital against labor, white men against black. Consider this last group, for example. In the American army, one out of every 10 soldiers is a Negro. We are working constantly through our agents in America to divide these black men from the whites. Here we are playing on frictions that already exist and it is not difficult to build these up, to persuade the Negro to hate the white man and to convince the white man that the Negro is stupid and irresponsible, unfit to handle the tools of modern war. When the real test comes, you will see the results. By splitting off the Negroes, we will in effect have reduced the American army by 10%. 10% casualties without firing a shot. A million enemy soldiers, gentlemen, that is a major engagement. And if this mongrel American army dares to attack the sacred shores of the fortress Europe, you will see chaos in their ranks. These are the sacred shores of the fortress Europe. And approaching those sacred shores is the mongrel American army. Protestant and Catholic, Jew and Gentile, rich man and poor man, black man and white. They all hit the same beach under the same enemy fire. When they were hit, they felt the same pain. The same kinds of blood flowed from their wounds. They established their beachhead and they held it. The Americans had landed. They were fighting a bloody path across the hedgerows of Normandy when a counterattack came. This attack came from the sky, but it wasn't the German Luftwaffe. For three days and nights, the storm swept the English Channel. It hit the beaches that were supplying our army and wrecked everything in its path. Two years of careful planning and hard labor. Two years of skill and sweat. Inland, half a million fighting men were using up supplies, and they couldn't wait for more. This gun would need ammunition. The tanks would need gas. The men would need food. But these supplies were marooned in ships offshore. The Germans held the ports, and they were encouraged. They had said we couldn't supply our army without a harbor. Now they were sure of it. It was impossible to deliver the goods over the beaches. Well, maybe it was impossible, but we did it. We did it with the strangest American fleet that ever put to sea. With these amphibious two and a half ton trucks, the men of the port battalions established a 24 hour a day ferry service. They picked up the supplies from the ships offshore and delivered them where they were needed on the continent of Europe. This soldier did his job, and so did this one. They had a common goal, and they delivered the goods. Ammunition for General Hodge's men, gasoline for Patton's tanks, food, clothing, vehicles. The products of the Fifth War alone were being delivered on time. 
Yes, it was a miracle, but we needed more miracles, bigger miracles, because now we had a million men on the continent of Europe. When this man ran out of ammunition, would there be more? When this soldier picked up a field telephone, could he get through to headquarters? Would there be gas enough to keep this tank rolling into the heart of Germany? Miracles. That's what we needed, a bunch of miracles in a hurry. Broad, smooth highways. Railroads like the Union Pacific or the Santa Fe. Airfields with concrete runways for the heavy transports. We needed a harbor like New York or San Francisco. We needed a telephone switchboard that could reach a million men. And that's just what we got. These are the kind of men who did the job. The Germans said these men couldn't work with other Americans. They told this man he couldn't count on the American at the other end of the wire. They said he wouldn't be there. They said he was shiftless. Lazy. Split. Irresponsible. These engineers built a modern airfield in record time. This railroad would never match the Santa Fe, but it would carry ammunition to blast the crazy notion of a master race. These men knew the score. They were busy hating Germans, not each other. Patton's men needed gasoline. And that's what these soldiers gave them. They laid a pipeline from the Channel to the Rhine. The port of Cherbourg was taken by American troops late in June. A week later, on July 4, the harbor was operating. It was operating because these men had been working on a round-the-clock schedule for seven days. The 4th of July. Back home, that's a holiday might be taking your girl to the beach, or sitting at the band concert holding your wife's hand, or taking the kids out for a picnic in the country. But this wasn't that kind of a fourth. This was 4 July, 1944, and there was a job to be done. Of course, there were fireworks here, too. But you didn't have time to stop and watch the display. Because these men knew how to work together, a devastated harbor city became a useful port again. The stockpiles were building up. But up forward, the armies were on the move. The first was smashing across Normandy. 10, 15 towns a day. Patton made a wide end run and slashed to within 25 miles of Paris. They were outrunning their supplies. There was talk about running short of artillery ammunition and food and gasoline. One thing saved the day, a steering wheel and a pair of hands. 9,000 steering wheels and 9,000 pairs of hands. The Red Ball Highway, a trucking job that carried the goods from the docks of Cherbourg to the armies at the front. The schedule, 24 hours a day. The drivers, a bunch of American soldiers. Men who drove from sunup through blackout. Men who were bombed and strafed, and sometimes killed by mines. The Germans said these men were only good for pushing wheelbarrows or toting boxes. Well, if this is toting boxes, nice toting soldier. These are the men who couldn't work together, who'd never get along. They didn't agree with you, Dr. Goebbels. General Eisenhower didn't agree with you either. Speaking for him is Major General E.S. Hughes, who expresses the appreciation and commendation of the Supreme Allied Commander. The success of our recent military operations, he says, depended on the Red Ball Highway for the delivery of vital supplies. When those supplies were most desperately needed, the Red Ball drivers delivered the goods. 
Congratulations for a tough job. Well done. In the air over Germany, another Nazi myth was being shattered. You couldn't sell prejudice to the 15th Air Force, Mr. Hitler. On a bombing mission over enemy territory, a fighter escort is a mighty comforting sight. You don't ask who the other pilots are or where their grandfathers came from. You know they're Americans, and that's good enough. This man thought it was plenty good enough. As far as he was concerned, this man could fly top cover for him any day. He'd been out with a 332nd fighter group before. This is the man who couldn't master the tools of modern war, remember? In the ground fighting too, Americans were working together as a team. On 21 September 1944, the 101st Infantry launched an attack. They were supported by the 769th Field Artillery. On 25 December, the 370th Infantry attacked in the Po Valley. They were supported by the 695th Field Artillery. On 16 March 1945, the 409th Infantry cracked the famous Siegfried Line. Running interference for them was the 761st Tank Battalion. This veteran tank outfit fought with the 3rd, 7th, and 9th Armies. Landing in Normandy, they fought their way across France, Luxembourg, Belgium, and into Germany. In an official citation, Major General M.S. Eddy, Army Corps Commander, said, I consider the 761st Tank Battalion to have entered combat with such conspicuous courage and success as to warrant special commendation. To this, Major General W.S. Paul, Division Commander of the 26th Infantry, added, Your battalion has supported this division with great bravery. These men had to have a belief in each other and in their country that was stronger than anything the enemy could hurl at them. This German gun fired Nazi propaganda as well as Nazi high explosive. What would this man do? That's what this man wanted to know. We know now what he did. We know what they both did. And we know that they did it together. The price was not easy to pay. But they paid it. Together, they hammered out a monument to the idea of unity. And they fashioned a tomb for the idea of a master race. These are the Americans who did the job. 
they didn't think that america was perfect they knew it wasn't they didn't believe that prejudice doesn't exist because it does but they all agreed with sergeant joe lewis when he said there's nothing wrong with america that hitler can fix and they proved on the battlefields of europe that there's nothing wrong with america that americans can't fix <laughs>